Hi, I'm Minda Tracy. In this video, we're going to look at how Power Query handles splitting text in comparison to using an Excel formula for the same task. And what you're going to see is how easy Power Query is to use in comparison to the equivalent formula. Let's dive in. I've got a list of URLs here, and I want to extract the domain name, including the www. if there is one, just like you see here in column E. And if you look in the formula bar, you can see my formula. It's not for the faint-hearted. There's a total of five different functions, including if, is number, search, mid, and left. It's the kind of formula that hurts your head to write. In fact, I wrote a five-step system for writing formulas just like this. So let's take a look at how we'd achieve the same in Power Query. I've got a list here of my URLs, and I've formatted them in an Excel table. So all I need to do is go to the Power Query tab, choose From Table, and this will load this list into Power Query, and it opens the editor. Now you'll notice that the query editor looks just like Excel, with a ribbon, and a formula bar, and columns and rows. On the Home tab, I can use this Split Column tool, and I'm going to choose By Delimiter, because my URLs have these forward slashes, which separate the different components. So I'm going to choose By Delimiter. What type of delimiter? Well, I don't have the forward slash in the list, so I'll choose custom and enter it in there. Then I can choose where to split it. I'm just going to choose at each occurrence. And then in the advanced options, it puts in an eight for me because eight is the maximum number of forward slashes. But I'm going to override that with three and that will give me just three columns. And I'll click OK. So there's my three columns. I only want this third one here with the domain name in it. So I'm going to remove other columns. I'll rename this domain. And I'll give my table a name, domain names. Now notice here in the applied steps list, I've got a list of all the steps I took to get to this point. And Power Query has recorded them much like the macro recorder would record the steps you take in Excel. And that means I can reuse this query again and again, just like you would a macro. Let's load this table back into Excel. I'll click close and load. It will insert the table on a new page for me, ready to use in my Excel tasks, just as I might any other Excel table. I'll give it a name for the sheet, domains. Now you might be thinking you could do the same with the text to columns tool on the data tab, and you'd be right, but the text to columns tool can't do this. Let's say a new domain name is added to my list. So now I've got this extra domain name. If I go back to my Power Query list, all I need to do is right click and press refresh, and Power Query has gone and picked out this name stripped out the HTTP colon forward slashes and the blog on the end and returned my domain name just as I want it. Now I think you'll agree text to columns can't do that. It's impressive, not only in what it can do, but how easy it is to use. Let's look at another common problem. Data that's not in a tabular format or data that has already been summarized into a report pivoted, if you like, and what you really want is to convert it into a tabular format so that it works with pivot tables and formulas the way they were intended. So I'll just quickly format this into a table, Control T, and my table has headers, so I'll leave that box checked. Now I'll load it into Power Query from a table. Now the first thing I want to do is copy down the month names, that will correct these blank spaces, and I can use the Fill tool, Fill Down. Then I want to unpivot these columns with the values in. So I just select them and unpivot columns. And now I have tabular data. All I need to do is give my columns a better name. Product and call this sales amount. So there's my table, unpivoted, ready to use in a pivot table or any other formulas that require this tabular format. I can't tell you how happy this makes me. The bane of my life, and I imagine possibly yours, is data that's not in a tabular format. It's the most common reason people run into problems with pivot tables and using simple functions like SUMIF or SUMIFs. Now with Power Query, it's dead easy to fix it. I'm just going to give my query a better name. We'll call it Sales Data. 
And notice, again, the steps have been recorded. So next month, when the April figures are added to my table, guess what I'm going to do? Yep, just refresh, which will add April's data to my sales data table. Then I'm going to get a cup of tea and take a break. I've earned it. Well, okay, Power Query has, but no one needs to know. And the best part is Power Query is free and it works in all versions of Excel 2010 and 2013. There's no steep learning curve for the most part. It's point and click kind of stuff like you've seen here. Now I've shown you how to use Power Query to clean and transform data from Excel, but there's a huge number of data sources you can get data from, including the web, from a file, Excel, CSV, from XML, text, and even multiple files from a folder, which you can consolidate together into one table using Power Query. There's loads of different databases to choose from. You can also get data from Azure, including the Microsoft Azure Marketplace. And in from other sources, we can use SharePoint, OData, there's even Facebook, SAP, and Salesforce. And this list is growing all the time. Well, I hope this video has whetted your appetite with ideas as to how Power Query could speed up your Excel work. I encourage you to have a play around with it. And if you'd like to get off and running with Power Query fast and learn more cool Power Query tricks to impress your boss, then keep an eye out for an email announcing my new course where I cover all of the data transformation gadgets it has. Plus, I show you how to get data from the different data sources, including the web, SQL databases, combined text files contained in a folder and more. I'll even show you how to work with Power Query's programming language, informally known as M, so you can accomplish more advanced data transformations. Thanks for watching.